أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول والأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول والأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول والأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول والأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول والأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول والأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول والأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول والأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول والأمر is a way of ishq and muhabbat, its power is in love, its reality is based on the reality of our existence. We've talked many times before that Allah has created this creation from love and the understanding of that love is understood in an atom. Not what people know from love because everybody may have a different understanding of what love is and what are the, the confines of love and muhabbat. So they say, look to an atom that Allah makes the reality within the nucleus positive and puts a divine charge within that center. Allah creates all of the electrons and puts an attraction into the electrons. Resonate a power that's always positive, always loving, always filled with ishq. Create an electron that by its nature is negative because you can't have the two positives, they would repel. So the electron is negative but it's attracted to this center and this nucleus, what they call mass attraction. Because of that, that's love, that's ishq. When Allah want us from our little minds of science to understand, says, I put the ishq in the center and the nucleus, I put a love in that nucleus, not a love that humans understand yet. And I made your existence and all your electrons of a negative nature because you're not angels to be positive. We've been sent for a test. We have continuous desires and wants and our life is about trying to balance them and we have of a negative reality. But because of that negative reality what happens to a negative charge? It doesn't have to think, it's already attracted to the positive that is the reality of our creation. That's the reality of this science that Allah created this creation. He created that negative charge and by its nature, not its brain, not its thinking, it's attracted to the center. It's wujud, not its ego, can't stop it, nothing can stop it. As a result of its attraction to the center, it has to go, I have to be there. And Allah says, okay, hold on a little bit, not right now, keep that love right there. It teaches us our life and the love is so powerful that it's not in its own power, it begins to look for an opening to the center. When it wants to come it doesn't stop because of the force of it is pulling. What happens in that force? It begins centrifugal spin. It begins to move, looking for an opening, looking for an opening. That's the science for the people who like science. We don't really care for science. That's ishq, it doesn't stop. And because Allah put that power so strong in our existence, not our ego, it spins and it spins at such a rotation, what happens? It begins to rise. So the whole of our existence is a hologram of an atom with an electron spinning at such a rate of speed that it begins to provide or produce a hologram. And it's all empty and Allah describes that this life and this world of ours is an illusion. It's a hologram moving. If Allah should pull the love, if the Divine pulls the love, not the love of humans, but if He pulls a Divine love and pulls it out, the electron will no longer be attracted to the nucleus, 
and the system collapses and it's but one shout. One shout that he calls it back, pull out the mass love and this entire planet of ours collapses and Allah describes the mountains will be like dust. What happens if all the earth, this atomic reality just collapsed to nothing? So means our reality is based on this love. And in the last days they're teaching that the guidance and the reality of guidance, it can't be through the brain because people are being bombarded so much with all these choices, all the wrong desires and the wrong choices. And Allah gives through the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad we talked last night, He said, in my time if they left 10% of what I taught them, they were gone, they were out of that reality. How much they adhered to that prophetic teaching. But a time would come in the end and the last days that if they followed 10% of these Divine teachings, those people who followed 10% would be the people of paradise. Allah inshaAllah make us ten from the ten percenters. <laughs> it means there's nobody going to be doing ninety percent. And if they claim they are, they're lying. It's such a difficult time. There's so much fitna, you open a TV it's fitna, you open a phone it's fitna, you open everything. They say 700 to 800 forbiddens. You can't name but 20 of them, so what are the other 780? There's so many that un-understood. That's what the reality of Prophet was teaching. If they followed just 10% of these laws and rules of good character and goodness, you, those people will be the people of paradise. And then we talk today, he gave another hint to the holy companions that, you know, in the last days from those 10% people, not in the same discussion but you put these realities together. They're going to come a nation, a group of people from our nation that they'll give everything for one vision of me and they are my lovers. And he gave them the title, the nation in the last of times. If you find them they are my ahbab, they are my lovers, they love me. They would do everything for one glimpse or vision, khash or vision or dream of that reality in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and the holy companions who are astonished and for dramatic expression, I thought, we're the lovers. I said, no, you're my companions, you see me, struggle with me, of course you love me. But a nation will come from my nation that have never seen me but they struggle and strive with whatever they can to get a glimpse of me. They love me and I love them. Now we go, that's the secret of this guidance of these days. They're not going to do much and if they can do just a little bit then Allah opening for them because He's grading on a scale. The scale of humanity will be so bad in its choices. If they just do a little bit of good, the gates of paradise are wide and they enter into that reality. And if you want to get them and you want to guide, you have to guide with love, with good character and love. So the turuqs are a school of good character, speak good, do good, talk good act good. I mean we're perfect because people come back and say, oh you're like, you're like this. It's not about that, not about being perfect. It's about taking a class towards the reality of perfection so that when you do good, you try, you know that you stumbled, you said something bad, you're aggressive, angry with other people, that you struggle at night and meditate. That's why they keep asking, meditate, meditate. They say, oh I meditate all the time. Did you meditate at night and wonder why you bothered your other fellow companions on your path? Are you meditating and think at night? Did I bother one of them? You can do many guna but if you break the heart of someone whom Allah loves, Allah is going to be in a war with you. It's a very scary class of people to be with. 
These are ahbab, these are ahl al-dhikr, these are the people whom Allah loves, He's calling them to His carpet. I'm allowing my name to be mentioned in your home. Your home is your heart, not the walls of some place you buy. Home is where your heart is. So Allah says, I allow my name to be mentioned in your heart. It's my gift to you. So the turuqs and the Sufi path is about having good character and thinking, I should never harm somebody with my tongue. I should never be any type of aggression with somebody. That they should always think every night, if I die tomorrow who comes to my funeral? Who will stand up and say a good word towards me? Or will everyone stand up, oh finally that zalim is dead, let's tell you what he was like. And everyone will come up with a story about how you bothered them and, and, and uh, terrorized them. So the taruq is coming and teaching, guide them with love. So then these are the schools of, lo of love and guidance because He wants all of them to be future guides. Your first guidance is to yourself and then those of your family and loved ones. Guide them through love and good character. No matter what your difficulty and difference is, keep your character good. Speak good, see good, act good. Have the goodness of your character so that Allah love you and dress you and bless you. With that goodness you earn the proximity and the nearness to that reality. And only through that love everything can begin to happen. So that's the schools here, that's why we treat each other good here. That's why we're coming to learn how to have good character. That's why we teach the meditation so you take a hisab. Not that you think you're meditating and connecting. You're meditating, connecting but then asking what you did wrong that day. Because when you meditate by yourself and take an accounting, hmm, how was I? No John, you were great. Really? Yeah, you're fantastic, everything was fantastic about you. You're going to lie to yourself. So when you meditate and you make your contemplation, you're asking to be in the presence of the shaykh that I'm asking for the madad, I'm asking for your support, I'm asking to learn how to connect with you, inspire me what I did wrong. Who did I offend with myself, my character, my tongue, my hands, my feet, what did I do wrong? Not that you're going to be perfect but we took a path towards perfection. So that that night I can cry and ask for forgiveness. I'm realizing what I did wrong, I talk wrong to somebody. If you don't live a life in which to be very cautious and very careful, then what happens? God forbid you should cross the wrong person and say the wrong things and break the wrong heart. You have a life of difficulty after that. So it means the turuqs they understood this character. They did their best to have good character. Everyone is equal in their eyes with ishq and love to be respectful for. There's not some people you respect and others you don't respect. So then that good character and that goodness is what they learned and their responsibility for teaching. And that's all it is. And all the other rules they teach you discipline. So we say, oh you people have a lot of rules. Yeah but they're rules to clean you. Don't you want to know how to wash and keep your body clean? Don't you want to know how to, to keep everything to be pure? How to defend yourself against negative energies? Means these are all rules for our protection, you try your best to adhere to them so that you have a protection against negativi negativity, you have a protection against all the sort of difficult energies that are coming to make life more difficult. So alhamdulillah they try to follow the most they can and Prophet teaching, be fortunate if they followed even 10% of what you're teaching from Allah's rules. But keep them with love and good character. If you don't have good character, where's love? It's gone, it's not even there, it's not even something to talk about. As a result of that and as a result of how they've been dressed, how they've been 
taught, Allah opened for them these guides their soul. You see their physicality as well, physical like my physicality, what's the difference? But spiritual guidance they're not relying on the physical. That's why we talked about Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq last night that when Allah want to open, He wants to open mawt qabl al mawt that that guide is one whom is and has died before his death, that he's operating from his soul and should be operating from his soul and true guidance. And if he's operating from his soul then every association whether you're present with them or at a distance, because at the distance, if somebody can write a check for a billion dollars, do you question a check for ten dollars? No, it was like we were talking about it, so it's such a ridiculous petty change. If somebody is able to connect with beyond the seven heavens and into the paradises and into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad at what speed are they connecting? That the minute the association starts, they're in that presence receiving whatever has to be received. Faster than the speed of thought they're receiving their signal. With that speed that can't be even understood. Imagine trying to take a ship and go out of the earth's galaxy, go out of the Milky Way, go out of our universe, Allah knows where that is in that realm of space, with what speed they're connecting as a result of operating with the soul and the power of the soul and the speed of thought and beyond even the understanding of the speed of thought Immediately they operate through their soul and their soul is out and nobody understands it, nobody sees it unless those whom Allah open their heart to understand. And Allah describes them in Surah Al-Yaseen, Fulqul Mashqoon, they are loaded ships, loaded because their ship is their soul, not their physicality. A ship of a physicality is of no value to Allah because He says it's going to be gone in 70 years. Allah's realm is of eternity. What would the, the, the realm of physicality have any benefit? It's like a dot, not even a, it's an epsilon of a dot that doesn't even exist if, if eternity is a line and linear that has no beginning and no ending, what's your life on this earth? Not even a dot visible. So Allah say, your ship is your soul. Sayyidina Nuh should have taught you in the levels of the heart that the work you do and the faith you build is your soul. If you build your soul correctly with your good actions, good deeds and love, with all of these disciplines and these practices you reach a state of death before death. Death before death is that inside of you your whole reality begins to come out and they're operating from their soul and not their physicality. When they have to be with their physicality it's physicality. But when Allah wants them to be on they operate through the level of their soul and that soul is like a ship that immediately it's receiving its coordinates from the heavens with all its transmissions, all its energies and immediately their soul is being released into the association and one by one it takes all the souls of everyone around them. You entered on like a passenger onto their ship, something that people can't understand. You're not in control of your soul, you're not in control of keeping the light of your soul within you. You can't control your fingers more or less your soul. Right? But when that light comes because you don't think from the world of light. If you visualize yourself all as lights inside of you, when a superior light begins to shine out what happens with the nature of light? It diffuses into everything, right? So you have like a, 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 a white light, ten looms glowing. If one million looms which is how they rate the power of that light comes out it diffuses 
and put such a strong light they can no longer see your light. Why? Because your light is in that light. Their light comes out with such a strength that it puts all the lights of everything inside of its light. And anyone watching now, watching later, it doesn't matter when, that same light is reaching out into their environment, into their homes because they're conscious visualing and, and looking at it, wanting to participate in it and their souls grab and jump onto that light, jump onto that soul, jump onto that ship and within an instant it is where that ship is being brought into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And the reality of guidance is from the world of light, not physical keep talking and then they don't want to listen, keep talking, they don't want to listen. What a horrible guidance that would be. Then you have to be like Indian school where you have the stick. Oh yeah? You're not going to listen? Yeah, dong, 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 dong. Have you seen like the, the, the Indian police? They have this long stick, they're beating everybody, everybody, everybody in line. Even you're in the line that he told you to be, he's still going to beat you. You've seen these poor guys on Facebook, oh, why are you hitting me? I'm already in the line. I don't know, here, I got the stick. It can't be guidance like that. When Allah wants to guide, these are the people of Mawt Qabl al Mawt, that they operate from their soul, Fulqul Mashhoon, that their souls are loaded with these realities. And their soul comes out like a big ship just for us to understand and visualize, it moves in the room. As it moves all the other souls are being caught by it. And as a result from the speed of thought it's moving to where it has to move. It's being called into that presence of their shaykhs, their shaykhs, their shaykhs, holy companions, Ahlul Bayt, always into the presence of the sultan. Because where are they? Where are the companions if you connect with them? Are they off in a different room having a celebration? Or they're called companions. They are always in the company of Sayyidina Muhammad So means these pious souls are always in that presence. As soon as you associate with them that's why ishq is important, just loving them. Open your heart, have a love and an ishq and a respect and good character and as soon as you tend they don't need more than five minutes of your time and immediately their soul is grabbing and bringing into that presence. With what dress and with what reality the soul is dressing? From the prophetic reality is describing, these are from 10% people. Dress them, bless them, grant them a light and a love within their heart, save them, take away difficulty from them. And that's what the great intercession means. Why I'm the intercessor? Why Sayyidina Muhammad described, of all the gifts that all the Prophets have, my gift is intercession. Yeah, because everyone is in need of bringing those souls to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Mahidunu muhi al qulub. Why? Because you bring them, I annihilate all their sins, all their wrongness, all their bad character. By his du'a to Allah all the badness will be taken away and all light will be restored upon them and then sent back to where they're supposed to be. Within a blink of an eye and that's the reality of guidance. When somebody says, why you have to watch them? Oh, how are you going to explain why you have to watch them? So just give me a little bit of time, I have to watch them just a little bit of time, don't need more than that. But if your heart is attracted to it, alhamdulillah. But the immensity of the rahmah and the mercy that can't be understood. And when you have a love that's why all the teaching is then you're like an electron and they became like a nucleus because they're a reflection of Allah's nucleus. You're attracted to them, you feel the, the pull from your soul to be with them. So then instead of looking at five minutes you start to look six minutes, seven minutes, nine minutes because the love is growing, the attraction is no longer in your heart and your command and your, your control. It's just coming out of your existence 
to be with them, to be happy around them, to, to watch them. And that's when you know that you've caught fire, that that ishq has come into your wujud, into your soul. And through your soul your love is ignited and as a result you're now following in that companionship. That we pray in these days of difficulty and immense amounts of negativity that Allah grant for us a love and an ishq and good character. And by means of that good character and that love that keep the companionship of the people of love. And through that companionship that Prophet dress us, bless us, intercede upon us, take away difficulties and present us to the Divinely Presence to be pleased and happy with us. Inlahi anta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.